Hello, many of you might have already seen the Icon A5. It's a strikingly beautiful aircraft that makes an impression on you the first time you lay your eyes on it. In this video, we're going to explore if the Icon A5 is a good candidate for electrification, and if so, what performance can it deliver with electric propulsion? On this channel, Electric Aviation, we bring you the latest developments in the world of sustainable air travel. Subscribe to get all our updates. So let's get right into the electrification of the iconic Icon A5. For those who aren't aware, the Icon A5 is an amphibious light sport aircraft. So far, more than 100 units of this captivating flying machine have been made. Although there have been a lot of roadblocks and mishaps along the way. If you look at the A5, there are a few design elements that lend themselves well for electrification. It has a comforting glide ratio of 9 to 1. It has a 10.6 meter wingspan, which is more than three proven electric planes, the Pipistrel Alpha and Pipistrel Valis Electro, and the Airbus E-Fan, and it has a larger wing area. It has a retractable undercarriage, which makes it more aerodynamic during flight. Furthermore, there are very noticeable sponsons that provide stability in water and also generate extra lift. And it has lots of space, about 1.7 meter cube to be precise for baggage. However, it has certain features that don't favor electrification. For example, it requires more power to be pushed through the air owing to its relatively larger cockpit, frontal area, and relatively heavier weight. Therefore, it houses a 100 horsepower or a 75 kilowatt Protex engine, while other electric aircrafts in its class require only 80 horsepower or 60 kilowatt. The weight of the airframe is 427 kilograms, excluding the weight of the engine, which is lighter than the Airbus E-Fan, but heavier than Pipistrel Alpha Electro. So, with the numbers that we have looked at, it is not yet clear whether electrification is a possibility or not, and we will have to take a deeper dive. First, let us find out how much weight of the batteries we can pack into this plane. The Icon A5 uses a Rotex 912 IS fuel-injected engine, the weight of the engine is about 63 kilograms. It has 76 liters of fuel capacity of aviation fuel, meaning it could carry 52.4 kilograms of fuel. Furthermore, it has an allowance of 27.2 kilograms for baggage. Thus, we can have 142.6 kilograms available for us for electric propulsion. A 75 kilowatt motor that would replace the Rotex engine would weigh merely 20 to 25 kilograms. This leaves us with around 120 kilograms for the battery and other accessories. Now the most advanced high energy batteries in the market with the thousand charge cycles have an energy density of 300 watt hour per kilogram. Through efficient design practices, one can indeed produce a battery pack with a pack level energy density of 220 watt hour per kilogram. This gives us 24.2 kilowatt hour or 87.1 megajoules for the battery weighing 110 kilograms and leaves us with 10 kilograms for other accessories like the motor controller. If you look at the Pipistrel Alpha Electro, it houses a battery pack of 21 kilowatt hour and has a flight time of one hour. The Icon A5 being heavier and larger would require more power to lift off and cruise and that power and total energy can be easily estimated. The Icon A5 would consume about 3.75 kilowatt hour or 13.5 megajoules based on using full throttle of 75 kilowatts for three minutes during takeoff and climb. This leaves us with 20.45 kilowatt hours. Assuming the power consumed during cruise mode is 75% of the propulsion power, which is quite normal in small planes, a 18 minute flight could consume 16.86 kilowatt hour, leaving around 3.55 kilowatt hour for landing. Now, an 18 minute cruise time does not sound very attractive, even though it can cost less than $5 for that flight experience, which is basically the cost of charging batteries. But given that the price of the Icon A5 is right in the top tier compared to any other aircraft in its category, one can safely assume that its owners don't mind paying more in fuel for longer flight times. But what if we install solar panels on the wings? Would that make a difference? On a sunny day, could we expect longer flight times? Let's have a look at that proposition. 
Now the Icon A5 does have a reasonably large wing area of 10 square meters and solar panels on electric planes have been tried and tested before with success. The A5 could easily accommodate solar cells in 7 square meters of the wing area. Using the highest efficiency solar cells we can have a 1400 watt or a 1.4 kilowatt system installed. The solar electricity can not only charge the battery but also provide auxiliary power if the main battery bank malfunctions. We can also remove the alternators of which there are two in case of installed solar power. On a clear day the solar cells on the wings would recoup about 0.48 kilowatt hour during the takeoff and cruise currently estimated at 21 minutes. Given that our flight consumes about 0.93 kilowatt hour per minute during cruise, the solar panels would add only half a minute of extra flight time. So from the calculations that we have carried out using the current battery technology, it certainly does not look favorable to electrify the Icon A5. We can get the aircraft to fly, but it's not enough to keep it in the air for long. Even if 60 kilograms of additional battery is added, which is 13.2 kilowatt hour, to replace the passenger weight, making the aircraft a single seater, it would only give an additional 12 minutes of extra flight time. While it's not the result many of you might be hoping for, but who knows, with the development of aluminum air batteries, we could be flying this great looking aircraft for hours on electric propulsion one day. We do hope you would have learned something new from this video. Like and share if you did. Thank you for your attention.